Hi, I'm Chris with uh, Graduate Space Radio, and as you can see at the bottom there, it's a birthday gratitude episode. I am not Miranda, so let me bring in Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Hey there. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know, I feel like this is the first birthday gratitude episode that I've done with somebody in the same city. So, you know, oh, you're, wow. you're my you're my first. I feel like Louisvillean in Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> to um, maybe even be on the podcast. So maybe you've got uh, not only the podcast, but you've got the birthday one too. So, so thank you. I'm I really definitely really have really asked good. other people, but um, I feel like I asked your, I asked Dustin last year and he just wasn't feeling it. So <laughs> Dustin's not one of those type of people. He is not like a public person. So yeah. Yeah. I made sense. I wasn't, I wasn't hurt by it. I just put, I just asked the question, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we were talking before that, you know, we haven't seen each other in probably a year, but, um, you know, a uh, fun thing I've been doing recently is just kind of sharing gratitude for the connections, right? So in our situation, you know, I remember the first time I met you and it was because of our mutual friends, uh, Corey and Kate Boston. So I have huge gratitude for them. We went to, I believe the first time we met was at Havana Rumba, uh, the night yeah. we uh, went to uh, Circus Soleil down at the uh, Yum Center. Does oh, that yeah. sound right to you? Oh, Yeah. So much fun. That was a fun night. Yeah, it was great. And if I even remember correctly, just to share a little more love for Corey, I, I believe like he then covered our meals with his certificates because of his business. Oh, of course. That's true, so, Corey Fashion. Yes. Yeah. And I even had three days ago, he took me to Havana Rumba and it was lovely. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, he gave us, uh, so my, since my birthday is this week, um, he gave us uh, tickets to, um, one of the, you know, like the, the lock-in rooms that you have to kind of figure out the oh, scene yeah. and get foods and stuff like that. So yeah, super sweet guy. He's awesome. We, he actually gave us uh, some of that too for our wedding because uh, I got married in November. And um, so keeping that in yeah. mind, thank you. Keep that in mind when you guys do go, if you want to try to buddy up, because we all have, we both have certificates, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've we been able to ex do that. excuse, that'd be an excuse for us to hang out and also go, go do these, these rooms. So um, now that I know you That'd have it, right. So yeah, <laughs> we'll make that so, exciting. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, this is, this is, you know, it's a very uh, open uh, conversation, you know, your birthday's here in a few days and uh, I'm just kind of let, let you, you know, in this moment being your, your birthday's coming up, just allow you to share some of your thoughts and some people or things you're grateful for over this past year. Oh man, I've got a lot to be grateful for. And I'm, uh, I'm one of those emotional sorts too. So uh, when I start talking about the things I love, I feel very passionate about and I tend to like get weepy and stuff, which I'll try not to do, but. Um, oh, just no, be you. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm grateful for so much. It's been this year has been a wild ride. Um and I've been back in Louisville. I've been gone for 20 years out West, but um, I've been back in Louisville for about the last year and a half. And, uh, um, and that's been, that's been really, you know, a lot and helped me grow so much. And I've kind of been put into places that um, have challenged me greatly and challenged, you know, ideas about myself and who I am and who I want to be. And, um, I'm constantly, you know, I feel like in that mode and, uh, but this year has definitely, you know, cemented that, um, I was hired about a year ago to a nonprofit here in Louisville, um, called Youth Build Louisville and it works with 18 to 24 year olds and that's right up my alley. I've worked with, um, teen guys for the last 15 years doing drug and alcohol residential treatment programs, um, and so this kind of, you know, spurs along that, but it's more along the lines of like coming back into my hometown and my community and um, just giving back to all of that. Um, so we do education, helping um, kids get their GED or their diploma, but, um, and they've been there for about 20 years, but the last year they have a grant, um, from Louisville Metro Housing Authority and HUD to uh, work with rapid rehousing. And so that's my department. I'm the housing navigator for that and help house homeless youth. Um, oh, wow. So when we started that, um, we got the grant for that. Um, that's when they hired my position and three case managers alongside that. We started with nothing. We had no desks. <laughs> 
we barely had offices, um, but uh, it's it's come such a long, long way. And um, in a matter of a year, we have helped house over 40 individuals and their families oh, wow. Wow. during a pandemic. <laughs> So um, it's been just, you know, really amazing and really astounding. And there's been a lot of challenges with that, but I love a good challenge. So um, it just always keeps my brain moving. You know, you're, you're in and out of uh, town, you know, um, the office. So there's nothing, nothing's the same. Everything is always changing. You got to be ready to like uh, go with the flow of anything. So, you know, you, you're dealing with people's lives and, and so much of that is, um, involved in mental health. So we've really like reached out to the community and like found so much more that these kids need besides just housing, because housing is just one piece of it. But, um, but a lot of that is, you know, the reason why they're homeless and there's trauma that's included in that, whether it's, you know, from family or from, drugs and alcohol or from foster care being aged out of foster care and just kind of been left on their own. Um, All kinds of circumstances happen there. So there's a trauma set there, but then there's, you know, the trauma of being homeless and the anxiety that comes with that. And then the depression that comes with that, you know, of, you know, feeling like you're just kind of set aside and you're not worth anything, but um, so we really wrap up each of the individuals and get to know them and, and take them on, you know, each by each one. And so it's just a, such a cool experience to be a part of that. And I am thoroughly grateful for all of the individuals that I get to work with and everyone that I get to house. It just makes me um, realize what I have and um, right. I've been given so much. So whatever I can give back in my time, and um my resources and stuff like that i love it that's beautiful I, um i love how you said it it allows you to appreciate what you're doing it literally allows you to just directly appreciate where you're at and who you are like that's uh that mirror reflection of see you know actually feeling seeing somebody without a house and understanding like seeing them as a human being and, and listening to their stories and understanding where they're coming from and um it's, there's so much, there's so much good stuff there. You know, I've been talking this last year about, you know, how do we, what's the different ways to be in a catalyst for gratitude? You know, that's, that's all I want to do is be a catalyst for gratitude. And there's, fortunately, there's lots of ways to do that. It isn't like there's, yeah. you know, there isn't one avenue, but a massive one is just being present for people, you know, actually listening to people showing up, right. you know? Um, and that's when you, and so, so so many elements of that with what you do specifically, like you said, it's not only about, they need a house. It's about who they are. It's about seeing them, hearing their stories and understanding that um, you're assisting in not only getting them a house, but you're also assisting in in letting them know that you understand them and that you care. Because that's what listening and like right. doing those things is part of I care. That's me being present, you know. Um, but I, so so that's amazing. And then, you know, like I said, when you're you know, it's almost like if you're around somebody that has like a leg injury, you could almost be like, wow, I'm really grateful that my legs are, you know, I have healthy legs. Right. <laughs> like you. But right. but but that's a very simplistic thing. But what you're doing is you're with people that don't have homes and a home. Honestly, um, another thing I've been working on this year is like, how do we appreciate the everyday? Right. And the everyday is basically whatever you were born into. Um, right. And you and I, fortunately, because I feel like we, I could say that we were both born into places. We had homes, you know, there was running water, there was food in the refrigerator. So it's like, these are things that are easily taken for granted because it's always been there. Right. But when right. you, you know, but when you, um, when you are around people that don't have homes, it allows you and you care for them. It's like, it allows you to go actually, you know, it's in your mind to go, man, I have a home. I need to be grateful right. for my home because this is not, this is not a given, it's not, you know, it's like right. none of this stuff is actually a given, but you know, when you have it every day, like how do we, how do we engage in like the appreciation of, you know, the people around right. us, the things we have. And like you, with your, your work and your, your heart and your caring for these people, you're specifically tapping into that uh, appreciating every day because you're, you know, you're seeing people when, without homes, which is a massive, which is ma- yeah. massive culture shock. Well, that, you know, not just having a home, but that creates a a safe space, you know, for us to be ourselves and to feel comfortable. And, um, you know, there's so many individuals out there that just don't have that. And um, when you when you have that, that creates less worry about like, 
Um, where are you going to eat tonight? You know, where are you going right. to keep your belongings? Is somebody going to, you know, above bother you, you know, or assault you or any of those things. And, um, you know, keeping, you know, a lot of these, we have single moms and keeping your kids safe and the worry mm -hmm. of that and the stress of that, um, comes along with it. And there's just, <clears throat> there's just so much more that, you know, we take for granted every day. Um, so we, you know, we try to incorporate, you know, all of the needs so that they can hit the ground running with, um, everything in their, their pockets there. So, you know, we, we help with jobs and employment. Um, we help with childcare, mm. we help with parenting classes, um, bus fare, Wi-Fi, computers, you name it. We, we, we help, you know, all of those things. And with every individual that we house, we reach out to the community here and, um, you know, let people know that we're looking for certain furniture. We try to furnish their whole homes. So they, mm. they just, you know, they have something there. So not just like they have a place to be, but they have a home um, right. because, you know, that's just, it's just so important to their mental well being and being able to, to function, you know, as an, as a normal person. So we have a lot. Uh, yeah. I, um, you just, yeah, I, I when you were talking, I was thinking about this whole reverse engineering. It's like, obviously we have a home, which is great. But like you're saying, it's like, we have a place for our stuff. Like, so there's another thing. It's like, regardless of how much stuff you have, it's like, we have a place for our stuff. So that's like, okay, I'm grateful. I have a place for my stuff. I don't have to, you know, I have a place that houses my, I don't have to worry. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, like, I don't, I, right. I have a, I'm, I'm safe because there's a lock on the door. So I'm in a place that I'm secure. Right. Like there's so many, like, there's so many things that, are just sitting in the element of having a home to be grateful right. for these things, right. that, these problems, you don't occur. You know, if you're, if you were living on the streets, obviously anybody, like you said, anything can happen, whether, you know, whether people, um, it, what, it, whatever. Right. And then you either went another step. It's like, what if you're with your parent and you're homeless? Right. So it's not only like you have all this other thing and you have like, Oh, I have a being here that right. needs that I have to take care of and doesn't have shelter. Like um, I, I can't even, uh, imagine like the, uh, the stress and like instability right. of the, that that's a whole other layer, right. Of like, of stress and instability. And just, uh, and again, when you, when you get somebody in, um, and then, and then I, I love that you're saying that you reach out to the community, you, you, you try to make, you not only you give them a roof, but you try to, you assist as best you can to make it a home. Like that's, uh, that's a beautiful thing. And then you get to be a part of that and walk into it. And, um, that's gotta be some, I mean, can you speak to that feeling? I mean, maybe the first time you got, you know, you set somebody up here in town with, with the community and just being there for that, that moment. I mean, it's hugely rewarding. It just feels amazing to be able to give somebody that kind of peace of mind and their reactions are just, you know, they're priceless. And, right. you know, that's, that's what the heart of life is right there to me. Like, seeing somebody be able to come in and have that and just like feel love. That's enormous. So um, anytime I can be a part of that. Right. That just, right. Just, it's amazing. But yeah, the first, you know, the first time that I, I have, I've had so many, you know, individuals, you know, sit down at my desk and just cry their eyes out and, and gratitude and, and be just so grateful and thankful. They're, um, <laughs> they're just beautiful people. And, uh, I love to be able to see that. Mm. I love that. I, uh, it makes me think of the, uh, you know, there's some images that go around where they're like, you know, somebody's, somebody's, somebody's praying for what you have right now, or, you know, that whole idea of like your, right. your reality is someone's dream, you know, and, um, you know, just, you know, just the fact that, you know, basically if you have running water coming into a place, like you're, you're like an 80%, of, you know, like we're on the top <laughs> right. of, of just, you know, on the planet of just having things, the necessities and uh, you are living better. I don't say it, uh, how, how to, how to equate that, but this is simply, you know, like I said, the simplicity of running water. That means, that means I have a home, right. That means it's coming in, you know, it's like, um, it's such a massive thing to be, to wake up and to, to be grateful for these, 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 uh, just, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I didn't know we we're going to have a conversation like this. I'm really, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, you know, I, I think of it, you know, I talk about like gratitude stacking all the time. So it's like, 
you know, it's it's amazing. Like what you just said about them, them coming in and sharing this this moment of how grateful they are that they they they've got a home. So it's like it's there's so much going on there. But it's like, again, like because, you know, because it's like when you're born into it, it's hard to appreciate it. But when you say that, like and when you share the story, it's like, wow, it's like, you know what I mean? Like it all it means so much more. Yeah. It's like so much. Um, oh. Well, not just that, but that emanates from like, right. you know, their gratitude and I'm grateful for them. And then our case managers, you know, we all feel, you know, that just like builds and it kind of reverberates. Right. Like, I think that, you know, we all create ripples around us and how are those ripples going to affect everyone, you know, around you, whether you want them to or not, you right. know, we all affect each other. And so, you know, what is, what is your effect going to be on someone today? Is it going to be something that's like, positive or is it going to be ripples of negativity and so like when we're able to do the things that we do um and we have enormous support from the community which is so amazing to see um especially just it being my hometown that just means so much um you know those waves create more waves when you hit someone else's you know with that positivity then you know it, it bounces off of them it just is it's just such a cool thing to see so yeah, it's uh, yeah that uh, that's that's so true. It's like we we uh, with intention you can go okay. You go. I know that everything I'm doing is affecting something. Doesn't matter right. if, it's, if I'm standing here, it's affecting the floor, right? If I'm if we're yeah. talking, obviously we're affecting each other. You know, if I'm driving down the street, it's like it, the, all these things affect. And uh, and with that mentality, you know, when you when you do acts of service, like what you're saying, obviously it's your work, which is great, but it's an act of service. It's like you're in them, when you're serving somebody else, you stop thinking about your own problems. You know, it's like you become present and you're there for somebody else. And it's like, uh, I have a, I have a friend, uh, my friend, Mark Shapiro, who he has a, uh, app called love bomb, but he basically, what he started was he would, he would just get on Facebook. He basically, he would record a video for anybody that was in his Facebook group on their birthday. He would record a personal video to them. And he's done this, I think something like, I don't know, five, 10,000 times, something like that. Cause oh, we've been doing it for like four or five years. Um, wow. But the, yeah. Right. And that's why he started this app. He built an app to allow people just to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, the whole thing was, and he's even spoken to, he's like, he's like, when I, he's like, I, I built this into my life where I'm going to like share real appreciation for these people, even if I haven't talked to them in a while or whatever, you know? Um, but he right. realized it's like when he did it, he was being intentional and he was being present and thinking about, you know, it's like an act of service because you're not thinking about yourself right. and you you're wanting. And, um, and it's, it's such a powerful like tool that any of us can use in any given moment. If we really want to like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to pay attention to somebody else. I'm going to stop thinking about myself and be present. And I remember I got one on my birthday this last year and it was beautiful. Like he even had his daughter and it was really, really, really touched me, you know, and I could tell again, that's because he's, he's, in it and he's done it. You know what I mean? Like it's who he is. Yeah. And that's just part of every day. Just like it's hard to who you are with your work. You know, you show up for people and it brings you present. It allows you to think about other people. It allows you to help. And at the same time, it allows you to appreciate the things you have. Definitely. I mean, like we can really get lost in, you know, our own selves and, you know, like kind of go down that rabbit hole pretty easily. Mm -hmm. It's easy to become like kind of selfish and self-centered and just thinking about, you know, our needs and what we're missing and, and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, when you stop and you delve into someone else's life and kind of see, you know, those things, you kind of step back for a minute and it, it does, it takes your mind off of all of your worries and the, the stresses of, of daily life and, you know, what lack you have or what, problems you may have um there's, there's no you know there's no i mean there's need for that but i think we get we get stuck on that a lot um but when we're we're able to you know um dustin and i had this had the whole conversation yesterday when i was talking to him about you know doing this podcast and talking about gratitude and i just think you know um I was telling him, you know, if he got up simply just to go take the dogs out um, yesterday morning and, and mm -hmm. let me sleep in. And, and I, I, I thanked him and, and, some, and, and sometimes he kind of looks at me kind of odd, like I just letting the dogs out. But um, I said, you know, like, I, I think that, you know, all of those mundane things of the chores of life, you know, we just, just showing appreciation that somebody's 
there with you doing those things. Like, right. Um, you're not alone. It mean, <laughs> yeah. You're not alone, but it, but it right. means something. It means so much more, you know? And, and, and I think we get overwhelmed and bogged down with like, we're just doing the chores. We're just doing these mundane things and this is just life. But when you have somebody there, that's like, saying thank you for you know helping me out with these things thank you for you know making dinner tonight thank you for doing the dishes um taking the dogs out you know those those little things i think you know that just that just spreads it makes you feel good it makes you want to do more it just it feels it, it just feels nice so trying to you know incorporate that into more of my life and those around me and um i think we all need to hear those things a lot more yeah, it's the um, it, it it comes down like for instance, I'm sure he takes out the dogs all the time, but it comes down to the, again that whole the whole problem we have with if something's what we get all the time, like we have to intentionally like you know we have to intentionally think about it because if he walk takes the dogs out every day, like you could easily just go like oh this is just what you know like it's just like just like the water coming into the house or just like the electricity always being on you know um, right. it's that um, it's it, you know I I was thinking you know I've been you know, I just got married and this is my, you know, I, my second marriage and, um, I was, you know, Rosie was so great about, we, we clean the house together. You know what I mean? Like it's something we do together. Like we make the bed together. And I, and I, it reminds me and it is, I'm not talking bad about Mac's wife. I'm not at all. It's just like, it was, it was different. You know, it was like when I was, right. I would clean, I remember cleaning the house myself and just waiting for somebody to say, thank you. Think about right. now where I'm at, where it's like, we're doing this together. We're appreciating the time. And it's like, it's like a, you know, and that's a big deal. And, she cooks for me all the time. And I think her, I do thank her all the time. And I, I do, even in the mornings, I, part of my hat, my, my, you know, my morning journaling is I, I have several things that I'm like, remember, I know this it, with her, it's such an easy picture to paint. So for example, you know, with her, you know, we dated long-term, you know, long distance for four years. So, um, you know, so basically there were years worth of days where I was saying goodnight to her looking at a video. You know what I mean? Year, yeah. years worth of days, years, you know? Yeah. Um, and now she's here. Right. Which is awesome. But, it, but I need to like remind myself that like how, you know what I mean? Like I never remind myself that that's the way it was. Right. And I wanted this so much. And it's like, again, like if you have as soon, it's the same thing. If you get a new car after like three, you know, three weeks, it's like, you, you know what I mean? It becomes normal. I don't want I her car. being here. Yeah. I don't want her to be here become, I don't, I want, I don't want it to be normal. I want it to be something I'm excited about because I should be right. You know, right. Uh, it wasn't like this was an overnight thing, you know, even <laughs> in, in, with last year with COVID, like putting the K one visa stuff together and the, you know, we oh had our God. embassy, we had our embassy date and then they, you know, they canceled the date. We had a new one. And then it was like radio silence. They're not doing the embassies are shut down, you know, and it was just like oh patience, patience, patience. And the crazy thing about, you know, Bogota and Colombia, they shut down like their international flights long before oh, yeah. USA did anything. So they were like locked down. And so basically the amazing thing is that we, we finally got like the visa appointment. She got, you know, she got the appointment, she got approval and then we're waiting. Okay. We need Columbia to open up just in, in country flights. Cause see, they hadn't even opened up in country flights. Oh wow! <laughs> You're talking about last October. Um, you know, so yeah. I think it was October 1st. So it was like, it was like October 1st, they opened up Am I doing this right? I think I'm doing it right. Yeah. October 1st, they opened up um, in-country flights. And it was like, okay, next step. Now they're going to open up international flights. And it was like, November 1st, we knew international flights were going to open up. And then actually, I'm doing this a month back. So it was October because it was we got married in November. Okay. It was September 1st was in-country. October 1st was international. And she was here, you know, on the 18th. So uh, these were all like, you know, it was all baby wow. steps, just being patient. And then she was here and you know, we got married in November and it was wonderful, but I'm just getting back to this. Like if we want to appreciate, we, we have to as individuals because of the way our minds are, unfortunately, it's like we have to build an intention to appreciate. And that could just be like, if somebody does something, whatever it is, I'm going to sit there and look at them and say, thank you. You know, and that could be, that's it. There's your trigger, right? Like, um, right. or with me, it's like with these big things, like I'm reminding myself every morning, you know, like this, that, that she's here and I need to appreciate that. Cause I don't, again, I really don't want to take that for granted. I mean, she, she, I mean, in this situation, she left like her parents and her family to be here with me. That's, I mean, 
huge. When I, you know, yeah, it, it is huge, you know, and that's why I didn't, even, you know, when we started dating. I never even foresaw us getting married just because I didn't think that was even a possibility, honestly. You know, it was this everything was baby steps, you know, it was like, even yeah. when I asked her, I wasn't sure how that was going to play out just because of how close she was to her parents, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, and then, you know, it's just, yeah, so I'm all about I'm all about building these triggers. So it's like what I'm loving about what you what you do and what you're speaking about. It's like with Dustin taking the dogs out, you you see him as like your partner there and you appreciate you're appreciating yeah. these everyday things that you guys have built together, which is really beautiful. And then with your work, like I said, you're showing up for people, you're you're assisting them and getting getting these places and you you automatically are just built into appreciating more of what you have because of these experiences and relationships. So it's um what a healthy and beautiful Freaking beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I've had a lot of, I, you know, I've had a lot of influence over the years that has kind of brought me to that, you know, um, a long time ago in college, um, I actually lived out West in Utah. Um, but I came back here for my cousin's wedding and I decided, and I moved to Cincinnati for nine months, um, helping her to do that. And, um, I nannied for a family that was really just truly amazing. And, um, at the time I was, I was working on, I wanted to be a national geographic photographer. Um, oh, I wow. wanted to travel. Yeah. I wanted to do all these things. And so, um, I've always got big dreams. <laughs> That's um, good. <laughs> they don't always, obviously they don't always happen. They take me in different routes, but, um, I remember I got, I, I moved, I, I did that. Um, I went back out West. Um, I met a guy and got married and I started, we started having kids and, you know, all those things kind of, those, those dreams kind of changed and stuff. And I remember them wanting me to come up and um, they, they had a place up in um, Idaho. They wanted me to come stay at their ranch and, and stay with them for a week or two in the summer. And so I did that. I remember a conversation, you know, of them saying like, well, what are you doing now and stuff? And um, at the time, you know, I had a small child and I was kind of just working part time for a property management company. And and I just remember them saying something like, what happened to all of those dreams? You know, like mm. what happened to all of those things? Is that, that just doesn't sound like, you know, your place. And, um, you know, she was talking about, she was doing, she had just started doing some cancer research kind of stuff and was talking about, you know, how uh, the direction of her life and, um, and where that was taking her and feeling great about that. And I was like thinking, you know, like, am I doing something that feels fulfilling? Am I just mm. like, doing a job? Am I just, you know, making things meet? Or am I really like fulfilling what I need to be doing? And the more I sat there and, you know, did that job, the more I thought that just really sank in with me. And um, every job I've had since then, I've thought, is this like where I need to be? Is this like what my soul's purpose is? Is um, Am I, you know, feeling fulfilled from this? And I thought, well, I'm going to keep moving until I get to that spot. And I feel like I'm definitely there. I'm not done. I've got lots, lots right. more dreams to go and stuff like that. But, and there's a lot more that I want to do for this community and I'm um, doing my life. But, um, you know, it's something that's definitely sank with me and sat with me for a long time. So I am grateful for each of the individuals that have kind of come into my life, whether I, I you know, agreed with them at the time or not. I think <laughs> that, you know, a lot of those things, sometimes we tend to look at um, hard, parts of our life and think, you know, what purpose did that serve? But I think it pushed me to grow and it pushed me to move in directions that I needed to be in. Um, and it pushed me into, you know, my purpose, whether right. I, oh, I realized it at the time or not. Yeah, that's, I, 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 that totally resonates with me. I, um, I have this theory called gratitude cubed. And if you're sitting, uh, it works with people, places, and you know events in your life. And if you're sitting in a place of gratitude, so if you're like in this moment, you're like, I'm very grateful. You know, you love yourself. You're grateful to be where you are. Um, you can look back and go, it's all okay. The good yeah. and the bad, it's completely okay because you know if you're you are who you are because of it. You know, uh, at right. the time, obviously things can be really crappy and and you can, you know, depression or whatever. You know, and I, I'm speaking for personal, you know, personal experience. You know. Um, but, you know, for example, you know, the only the main reason the reason we're talking right now and having this conversation on this platform is directly because of the love my mom had for me, you know, and if I, you know, I, you know, I wrote a letter for her four months on my on my birthday, four months before she passed away from cancer. And if 
if if she hadn't loved me and I hadn't written that letter, that that her love and that letter are stacking right now. We're talking about these ripple effects. Um, everything that I've done in the last five years um, is specifically from these actions. They're all stacking. So it's like yeah. um, I, you know, gratitude allowed me to reframe my experience. You know, um, obviously we could focus on you know, you could focus on the bad because there's a lot of bad there, but you could also find the good in it. You know, there's these, you know, with my experience, you know, I could go, <clears throat> I found going, you know, I had a, a a wonderful mom who loved me for 35 years. You know what I mean? And that's, and that is a gift. That's a freaking gift. There's that people that for one thing, like there's people's, you know, I mean, <clears throat> let's think of how, <clears throat> how, how, how many other ways could that play out? Right. My mom could have died when I was given birth, so it never would have met her, right? That's one way. Okay. You know, you I could have been given for adoption. I don't know where that would have gone. I never could have met her. You know, like there's art. I could have had my mom and she didn't care, you know, for whatever reason, you know, wasn't there for me, you know, or whatever that is, right? But I, in you know, in all these scenarios, I had a loving mother for 35 years. And that's a, and I don't want to take that for granted, you know. Um, that is a gift, you know, that's not a given. And, um, even, you know, when people talk about, you know, and with her side with the cancer, it's like, obviously that's a really ugly, ugly thing. But I could honestly say when, after she passed away, I was really grateful she wasn't in pain anymore. If you want to just flip the script, right. you know I mean? There's, oh, yeah. um, there's your the bottom line is you're in a scenario you can't control. So it's like, what are you going to do? Right. It's like, either you can let it take right. you down or you can go where, where, where is the, you know, what, what is, what is good in this, in this mess, right? What, what can we take away from this mess, you know? And I could right. honestly say that. And, um, there was one other, uh, it's one other thing that I really, um, that, that, that situation really taught me. Um, uh, geez, I got, I got a little, I got a little caught up there. Uh, but I was, uh, you know, it's just, there's, there's just so, you know, it's just, you know, it's, basically, you know, we get, the great thing is with gratitude, we get to decide what it all means. I mean, you get to make a choice, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, there, I feel like even in the worst been, you know, in the moment, maybe you can't see it, but in, in the worst things later on, if you're, again, if you're sitting in a place, you can, you know, you can see that, uh, you know, there's, there's always something to be grateful for. You can always find something if you're looking for it. It's just, uh, sometimes it's a lot harder to see. Um, but you know, with, with trauma, it, it becomes after more time, you know, it becomes uh, more real, you know, evident, you know, and I, and I think in, I think of all, like I sit in my life and I go, wow, um, where has this taken me with that, that turn, right. That, that basically right. it was like, I like to think of that. My mom passing away in cancer. It's almost like the, the car ran out of gas, right. Where did I end up? Right. Cause that wasn't planned, you know? Um, right. But you end up in that, you, your car stops and you end up, it's like, you have a choice, right. You could either sit in your car yes and wait for somebody to rescue you or whatever, or just sit there, or you can get out and walk around. Right. Or you can go get, you know, it's like you have, you have options. Um, obviously maybe you need to take a little time depending on what it is, but, um, you get to decide what you want to do next, you know? And I think it's, uh, with, with the lens of gratitude, I think that we can see these, you know, where we're going and appreciate where we've been. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with that. And I've, you know, working with a lot of the youth, um, I didn't have the mom that you had. I would love to have had a mom like that. My mom um, became addicted to heroin um, mm. and drugs when I was about eight and ran off with her, her drug dealer. Um, mm. And so that, you know, that's been a, that was a pretty traumatic experience. There's a lot more into that bag, but um, so I didn't really grow up with that kind of supportive supportive mom and influence but it's taught me so much um and it's brought me to where that I am now and doing what I'm doing now and um you know I've talked to so many kids and just said look you you may have come from this but that doesn't make you and right. you can choose and you can choose your path you can choose to take the same path or you can choose to make your own path and that's that's completely up to you but you know nothing that you know where you come from is set for what you need to be also you know and right. um how we go about living our lives and how we decide um who who we want to be at the core you know is 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 very important so knowing that you have the freedom to make that choice and teaching others that they have that same freedom to make that choice that 
they are not stuck in poverty. They don't have to be stuck in poverty. They don't have to be stuck with, you know, um, an education or um, in the same kind of, you know, uh, job situation, you know, working fast food or, or those kinds of things that they, they, they can, they can pursue their dreams that, you know, those are, um, those are, those are out there, but it is what you, you make of it. So you can either choose to make it something positive. You can either choose to give back or you, you know, you can make other choices as well. So I've definitely felt that, you know, sense in my life and I've had people that have influenced that. And, and so, you know, just picking those pieces out and being grateful for those things. Definitely. And I'm grateful that I had the experience that I had with my mom. I wish it could have been, you know, obviously a bit different, right. but um, it's definitely led me to see more and be aware of more um, and just know what others are out there dealing with so that I can have respect um, for them, even in those hard situations. So that's beautiful. I just love how you 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 got to look back in retrospect and you realize that the reason you relate to people and you can see people with the you know this love that you give to people is is specifically out of that you know it came out of that uh, which yeah. is a which is a bold statement but so true right because it's who you are it made who you are and again you love yourself and you take you care for people so and you're you know you appreciate where you are so um, back to that you know you know it's. Uh, those are the stories I love hearing. I love hearing that. So I really do appreciate you sharing that because it's like it's those are those are those mirror reflections we were talking about. That just like the more that people can share, <clears throat> that you know, you just shared. You basically just shared what came out of that and the choice you made. You know, because it again right. it comes down. It's it's like in, in you're talking to the kids. It's like don't you know you get to decide what defines you, not the other way around. It's your choice, not it's not right. you know it's you know it's it's and allowing you know it's that whole thing allowing. Um, circumstance to decide who you are is basically a very victim mentality. And like people can choose that if they want to, I don't judge people, but it's like either, you know, either you can decide right. what you want to do it or you can go, I'm, I'm a victim to this circumstance. And it, you know, that's right. the end of the sentence, you know, and I, I feel like you, people obviously can feel like victims, but at the same time they can make a decision to go, okay, I decide not to be a victim anymore. It's, it's going to, obviously it's up to the individual, but I feel like the more, the more real stories that people hear, it's, it's just, you know, it opens up pathways in the brain, you know? Um, I remember right. I was talking to my friend Lee last year and he was saying until I started talking about gratitude to him, he never even really even thought about it. It wasn't that he was like a thankless person, but it's like, unless you, it, it's, it's just a very straight point to, unless you hear somebody talk about these things and they don't, they somehow right. get in your vi field of vision, right? Because obviously we're ignoring 99% of the things that pass. Right. Right. Um, right. You know, but the more, like, we, even before we started, you know, the podcast, it's like, <clears throat> I feel like part of this, you know, like what we're doing, this catalyst idea and being a cast for gratitude, it's just, I'm just basically out there planting trees. You know what I mean? That's in like, that's what you're yeah. doing. Too. It's like, we're just in together. What we're doing is we're planting trees. There's so much toxicity out there in the, in the air. Right. And all, and all right. this is specifically is just us putting some good CO2 into the air. That's all we're doing. And, um, you know, and, and obviously we need a lot more yeah, of it. We need a lot of it. We can't put any more, you know, it's like, um, there can never be enough of it. And the great thing is because we're doing this together right now, we're like getting like literally, you know what I mean? Like, this is like, <laughs> You know, it's like taking, it's like you and I are taking deep breaths right now. Um, and that's, oh, what, yes. that's what, that's yes. what a gratitude practice does. That's what communicating gratitude. That's why, you know, on your birth, you know, any excuse to me, like, you know, it's like, what's the easiest way to engage somebody? I just want to engage more people in gratitude. I want to have more conversations. That's why like this whole birthday thing came out and I was like, this is great. Cause I can just get on Facebook and I can see friends I know I haven't talked to and, you know, I can reach out to them and then, you know, yeah. we can have this great conversation, um, which is just me building into my me taking my deep breaths of gratitude every day, you know? Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's an excellent platform. I love that you're doing it. I think there needs to be more of it. Um, definitely. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Thanks, Miranda. Would well, you have um, do you have any uh, maybe a couple of people you'd like to, you know, you'd, you'd like to share some great gratitude for here on your birthday? <laughs> Um, I have an immense amount of amazing friends, um, that I am super grateful for that have, uh, 
always been there through thick and thin, you know, the great times and then the hard times. And um, I just, I couldn't make it through life without them. Um, I have an amazing family that, you know, has supported me through, you know, so much. And um, I'm grateful for that. Um, and my kids, I have the most amazing kids. I just have to say. Oh, share, share, <laughs> share, share. I want to hear a little more about that. Share, share, tell us, tell me a little more about your kids. Cause I actually haven't, I haven't met your, I haven't met your kids, right? I don't know that you've met my kids. They're, they're kind of homebodies and they're kind of getting used to, you know, being here and, and, um, you know, meeting so many new, new faces and new people and stuff. And they haven't really been around my family a whole lot. Um, so that's, you know, also another experience for them. And so that's sometimes they get a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but um, I've got a 16 year old daughter, Althea, um, mm -hmm. named after a Grateful Dead song. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it's about a very strong, strong woman, very smart, strong woman. Um, she's a really awesome person. Um, uh, very sensitive, just beautiful, artistic, hilarious, fastest wit I can think of. Um, descriptive mm -hmm. beyond means. Uh, yeah, her descriptions are they're they're definitely off like more of a Corey kind of type mm -hmm. um uh humor but um super super witty um very caring and mm -hmm. uh same with my son um he's 13 his name is will and um just no grateful no grateful Do a dead song there <laughs> <laughs> no he was just named after he was named after both of my grandfathers my mom oh, okay. and my dad um, that was their first names and, and they were really amazing human beings. Um, especially my mom's dad. I just, um, we called him pops growing mm. up, but, uh, you know, he, he was married to my grandmother, I think 56 years before he passed mm. away. Um, and I spent so many weekends with them in high school. I moved into my grandmother's house after he passed away to help take care of her. Oh, um, wow and uh finish out finish out high school from two counties away but <laughs> um but but uh yes yeah, so he's he's named after after them and uh you know he's just grown up to be a beautiful young man i'm really proud of them that's beautiful i appreciate you sharing them with me and i i, lo I loved how you uh because when you brought up will you you um you know think about gratitude in the conversation it's like you know, I was like, where'd the name come from? And then you went right to your grandparents and like had the, I could tell this love and affection like this, you know, this whole other, we hadn't even, you know, brought up this whole other appreciation and love and this relationship was just simply because we, how, how'd you get his name? Um, so, I mean, speaking, I mean, I, you shared with me about your mom, but then we, you know, this is so great. You shared your, your you know, your grandparents, so obviously because of that situation, it looks like they became more, did the, you know, they seem like really they were good. definitely they were definitely a huge part of my life. I mean, there was a lot of times that um, my mom didn't have a safe place for us to stay with her um, when we had visitation with her. So every other weekend through high school, we would stay at their house with her. And so, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm definitely grateful for those experiences and being so close to them. Like they were just really funny human beings and they had a love for each other that I I want for my own life. Um, mm, mm. And just like the way they, I mean, that's a lot of years to be together. And I always think that that's so impressive because, you know, like humans, we, we kind of get into these kind of rituals. And we talked about earlier, you know, you talked about, you know, never wanting to um, let that gratitude, you know, for your wife go away and to always like be present and always be in it. And, you know, that's what I saw with them. And, and I think that it takes intention each day mm -hmm. and um, and it's something that you work for each day to not take for granted, you know, that this person chose and is choosing you every day. Right. And um, I just saw that in their life all the time. And of course, you know, you have times where, you know, somebody gets on your nerves and right. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you have those kinds of things. But, you know, at the end of each day, they always came back together. And I just think that, you know that's just something really inspiring and beautiful. And I, you know, I hope to have that in my life someday soon. 
That's beautiful. Well, I think that's um, I think that's a great place to wrap this up. I know I've kept you a little bit longer than we talked about, but I, I really okay. enjoyed the different places we went, and uh, I loved I loved hearing about your kids there. I loved I really loved hearing you start to talk about them because I could just see in your face like the the love. Like it was, I'm really glad we got around <laughs> to talk about your kids because it was, uh, you know, um, I could just your voice and your face and everything. I could just feel you know there was just such a love there. Um, that we yeah. get just because you just because I, I got to go well just share with me so I got to sit here and experience it um so it's it's such a beautiful thing um Thank you. you're welcome Thanks well for um me. oh for sure Morano you well um you know you have a great birthday and uh I'll be uh I want to thank uh Corey and Kate Boston and Dustin I guess I guess if we if I want to go second line I got to go Dustin I we <laughs> you and I so there's there's Corey obviously and then there's Dustin and that's they, so without the two of them we don't we don't have this conversation so right um, want to thank both of them and uh, you go ahead and give him a, a hug for me when you see him and if you'd like to even a kiss on the cheek um, <laughs> maybe an, aw- an awkward kiss on the cheek if you want to I don't know I don't definitely, know what to do with your hands I don't know what to do with your hands you know you. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a good laugh it's a good laugh. Um, <laughs> So, so thank you so much. I do, I do appreciate this. And uh, I'm, I'm Chris with Miranda, just to remind everybody to stay grateful and uh, have an awesome.